Joining us now to review some of the headlines of today's newspapers from around the world is Arise News analyst Emmanuel Efeni, the great Malabite. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning. Good morning. Good morning Rufa. Good morning, Good morning, Victoria. Tundu, MKO, Abiola. <laughs> you see, I, I expect you today. I have not harassed you. So you were asking, okay. asking her for help on what's happening in Oguse. Is that you to call me? <laughs> what full, do you mean by Oguse? Full time you're resident. You're a settler. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. He's resident a resident of Oguse. He's a settler. He's a settler. <laughs> full time resident who will tell you the great <laughs> things <laughs> that Pabiodu is that's doing, true. transforming Arepa and other places. Yes, he you said. It. He said, Tarry the road. <laughs> yeah. that not just tarry. Okay. Solid concrete road. Okay. That's what is coming up there. So journalists says to Yes. Yes. <laughs> Arepo to Arepo. Arepo. The community. The entire community. Yes. Yes. I'm a stakeholder there. Correct. So. Uh -huh. Correct. Thank you. For... Let's, let's update you on what's happening in <laughs> our state. Where we decide. <laughs> but but when you say you're a stakeholder there, is there yes. a dairy there? <laughs> no. No. no, he knows. He knows I'm a stakeholder. Oh, Rufai, how could you? He's a full-blooded stakeholder. There. <laughs> now let's start the review with this day, Nigeria's newspaper of records. The lead story: South South governors resolve to join VAT collection suit, urge federal government to constitute an NDDC board by law, demand forensic audit report be made public. Set to commission regional security outfit, Southeast governors, governors leaders to meet over rising insecurity. OB, the hospital B situation is disheartening. Gunmen enforcing stay at home order set tricycle ablaze in Enugu. Yes, a lot of stories to show under this lead story. Now, the forensic audit report of uh, the NDDC, which the South, South South governors are demanding be made public. That report, unless it is released, those indicted, those who collected all the multi billion contracts and never performed are exposed, and this government bring them to book, then the Effort will look like an effort in futility. But the South South governors met and stated their resolve to join the VAT collection suit. The suit is being enlarged. Many have been joined on both sides. Some northern states have asked to be joined with the federal government on the need to retain the VAT um, as it is right now before that before that ruling from the Port Harcourt High Court. Now, also on the front page of this day, Laddie Williams, SAN, exit of illegal luminary. That is the front page of uh, this day lawyer. Yes, the pullout, the Tuesday pullout in this day newspapers. Laddie Williams, SAN, exit of illegal luminary. Yes, he passed away sadly, over the weekend. Son of the legendary legal luminary, Rotimi Williams, better known in the courtroom as Timmy the Law. But if we look at the law pages, this article or the column of Onikepo Britwit is something that should attract our attention in the light of the conversation about the next president of Nigeria, Onikepo Braithwaite, S-A-N in the waiting, the one I call Kepo. Yes, if you look at that article, beyond zoning, the president Nigeria needs. And I will agree with her that we have to just look beyond zoning and also start focusing on competence those who can actually deliver on the job. Yes, the quote there does not really capture uh, the essence of the piece, but if you look downwards where she made a point, while we, the Nigerian people, are bothering our pretty little heads on how these challenges, the challenges we face, 
should be tackled. Politicians and rulers who by virtue of their roles in government are mostly responsible for the mess we find ourselves. We should be more concerned about the dreadful situation in Nigeria that Nigeria is in and be preoccupied with preparing viable solutions to save our country couldn't care less. Yes, the point she has made there is that politicians are more interested in just talking about the zoning. Why not this zone, not that zone? But the problems we face, and we all are agreed on that, that the next president will have to deal with a lot of challenges. What are the solutions? We need to see the candidates, those who are unapologetic aspirants, as this they put it, come up with solutions, how you solve the myriad of problems that we have in the country today, come 2023. We don't want to be in the same mess going forward. Now, the Guardian newspaper, the Guardian newspaper, VAT, South South Governors to face federal government north at Supreme Court. Brace Commission approves regional security outfit six, review of Petroleum Industry Act. Lagos demands special status, 1% in revenue allocation formula. Southern Governor's resolution to on joint VAT suit welcome development, says Pandev. South, Southeast Governor's leaders meet in Enugu today. Now, the Daily Sun newspaper. Finally, UK Blacklist Nigeria's COVID-19 vaccine certificate recognizes over 50 countries. Now, the very patriotic Rufai Oseni was even calling the British racist for doing this. Yes, they are. Yes, that's your view. But if your vaccine certificate is not being auctioned, sold, and bought, will you blame those who say, look, I cannot rely on your vaccine certificate. Deal with your problems at home. And of course, others will know how to relate with you. We know that people are buying and selling vaccine certificates. So, Why should some other persons not rely on what everybody is carrying? How do they distinguish those carrying the genuine and those carrying the fake vaccine certificates? So if you go to take the vaccine, after taking the vaccine, there's an international portal that you log on to, that all your details are on, that once you scan your barcode, to reflect. That's the process. That's the process. And that's the, the process is coordinated all over the world. Well, they don't trust the process coming out of Nigeria. Why is that they don't trust the Because out of we all know, we have reported it, that people are selling, circumventing the rules, selling certificates. So those you don't other, blame. Those other countries that they trust. Yes. It is 100%. Nobody sold certificates in those countries. Well, but of you and I know. Did. We're talking about our country. What are we doing? Did. So but it's 100% in those 50 countries. We need to put, our, we need to put our... nobody sold... Even in the UK, nobody sold certificates. But we need to put a house in order. You, you can't... No, the point, as yes. I said yesterday, is about principles. Every country has the right to defend its own sovereign interests and to protect itself and to engage in, you know, reciprocal diplomatic actions with Nigeria. Fisa Shayu, that's the head of the MPCDA in Nigeria, said much earlier that the Nigerian government is negotiating with the UK and that, you know, they will make efforts. What the UK government said, what kicked into effect yesterday, October 4, is that, look, only vaccines that have been approved in the United States, in Europe, and also in the UK will be allowed. And it's on the basis of that that the Indians took the uh, step of reciprocal action, yes. and they said, okay, if you are coming from the UK too, if you get into India, it will take 10 days. However, the, the positive side, as I said yesterday, is that the UK will continue to review this on a two-weekly basis. By then, the damage is done. Well, but it may happen that within two weeks, Nigeria may get, may move from, uh, we've been on the amber list, which has been eliminated now, so we may move from amber to green, right? 
which will mean simply that you won't have to quarantine for 10 days and pay over 2,000 pounds and get discouraged from traveling to the United States. Ruben, Kingdom. don't you so think it also... at the level of international relations, you really will find it very difficult uh, to question a country from saying we're protecting our interests. You may say from your own side of the fence that this is discriminatory. And that's the point India is making, that COVID shield is uh, basically AstraZeneca, which was even developed. So, so yes, you know, we, uh, we did not develop in anything. United Kingdom. We imported. So, but don't you think if we put in place a system where we now pick out those with fake vaccine certificate at our airports from going to embarrass us in other countries? Don't well, you think the Nigerian we'll, authorities will be making some that headway? In fact, if you give fake certificates, it's a crime. Yes, it is a crime. And that they will <laughs> activate the relevant sections, I think section 10. No, but you have to. Of the Quarantine Act. Yes, but you have to so arrest it, somebody. Yeah, but it's, a crime. You, uh, it's yes. a crime in Nigeria. So what I'm saying, the process of arresting people should be activated so that before they leave this country, they are arrested and dealt with. If we're doing that, I, no, we know the that. issue is that the UK, also the UK the does not trust itself. Self. So I, I, I think the problem, the, is, uh, the problem is, you see, and I think it's big hypocrisy. And like Fela said, within United, inside United Nations, I think it's big hypocrisy when we go to sit down in New York in August or, there, or September, thereabouts, and we say we're having this United because it's all a farce, deceitful. Even in a pandemic that nobody planned for, we still need, we still took it as an opportunity to show how discriminate, how, how racist we are, how we discriminate one another. Even in a pandemic that, that, that was taking lives, people are dying, the UK still looked for it as an opportunity. I mean, it was. You see, Mr. Fenny, when you talk like, was there a pandemic when the UK was saying Nigeria should be paying a guarantee fee of over one thousand dollars, one thousand pounds to get a visa a couple of years back before that thing was debunked? It's pure racism. Was, that, was, there, a, was there a else. pandemic? Was there a guarantee before racist. the this same UK said Nigeria should pay a one thousand pound guarantee for you to get a visa because you are not going to run away? Well, I beg yeah. to differ. You know, I don't think. <laughs> I think rather. That racism is quite a strong word. Yeah, no, that, that's my point. Also, well, I think within the purview, it's racist. No, it's racist. I think within the purview of international law and relations, every country has a responsibility to protect its own sovereign interests and to double check on other persons uh, that it relates with. Not even the United Nations, you know, will say, "Oh, this is racist." But what we ask for is global solidarity, global cooperation. Equity, justice. I mean, these people, there's something called intelligence, you know, um, basic, basically, mm -hmm. both domestic and in international law. Look, these guys, they know that many of these uh, other countries do not do the due diligence. So they, they, take, they make a step, they take this step to protect themselves. So it's not something we should be emotional about. I'm not so, being emotional. However, I'm being perfectly however, calm about it's it. Just it's just however, racist. It's just logic. I, however, as I've said, you know, this is something to be reviewed. The plan before the end of this month is to reduce the red list from 54, uh, which, uh, we, which is where it is at the moment, to nine. Maybe Nigeria will get onto that list. Maybe other African countries like Kenya, uh, that is complaining, will get onto that list. Maybe India will get onto that list. But the option that is clear to us is reciprocal action. Correct. If they say, you know, you if know, we feel so bad, we adopt. If the, you are a Nigerian, you, we, we, don't respect, yeah. we don't respect uh, uh, your vaccine certificate. Okay, if you are British, you come to Nigeria, we also don't respect your certificate. If we we'll quarantine you. If we feel so strongly yeah. about but the what, what, that's what should be done. The cheat for that is it useful. Uh, no, what it does is that it brings everybody to the table to that's, say that, what's the word for. So that, that, that is the argument. Correct. Correct. It's not about emotion. Yes. yes. Now, let's look at the New Telegraph newspaper. PDP NEC. That's zoning. PDP NEC may sanction Uruguay Committee for making its council public as National Working Committee meets Thursday. This is to pitch the party against Nigerians should the NEC reject the, its recommendations. The proper thing to do is to send the report to NEC that set up the committee. Did that committee make its view public? Or the journalists doing their job got wind and published? So, but 
if that is the recommendation of the committee, if it's, any, you have to move faster with yes, this paper. Yes, it is. It is what it minutes. is. Okay. A few minutes. Now let's just uh, look at uh, the Punch newspaper. Tension rises in Southeast. Military begins operation against killings. Others. Military police show for show of force creates confusion in Imo. Offices markets others shot. Army launches exercise Golden Dawn in Anambra against IPOP courtes other Southeast governors. Others to meet. The situation in the Southeast still very dicey. And the Daily Trust newspaper is at reporting attacks. INEC takes final decision on a number of election today. Political parties, stakeholders, hopeful. Tenure extension possible if, according to a lawyer. Now, if we look at the foreign newspapers quickly. Now, the Times of UK. NHS bosses face failing, face Sack for failing to cut weight. Javid will seize control of poor hospitals. Yes, the hospital managers who fail to clear mountain NHS backlog will be sacked under the new government rule. And Sajid Javid, the health secretary, is saying, look, that leadership is, will be held responsible in cases where hospitals don't make efforts to clear the backlog. They cannot just be throwing cash on the problem because last month's 36 billion pounds spending plan for health and social care uh, will not make the difference if the leaders, the hospital, the managers don't sit up and do the needful. Now, the Financial Times newspaper, U.S. crude hit seven year high after oil, nation, oil nations snub called to raise Profit. Now, many countries will benefit from this with a high price, but perhaps not Nigeria, because the higher the price of oil, yes, we make more revenue, but we end up paying so much importing subsidized fuel. That is a problem the government has to deal with. If not before 2023, maybe after 2023, the president, the next president, will have to bite the bullet, remove subsidy, and let us benefit from high price of crude by way of increased revenue. I just really resent the way you know, successive leaders have kicked that can down the road for somebody else to deal with. I think it's so cowardly, quite frankly. <laughs> but there was a headline you that President I saw. President Boris, cowardly for not taking that decision. You want the yes. people to rise. He told you to your face. Yes, that's you what i You want I'm me to saying. increase? Right? Yeah, somebody of has where? to have the courage to do so what's that the necessary. people will revolt? But we have to do it. <laughs> We're only delaying it. the evil day. We have to do it. Unfortunately, I just wish somebody would just grab the bull by the horns, but sadly it hasn't happened. There was a headline that I found quite amusing in the Times that you just, you, you just showed us the Times, but I didn't read that headline. The visa scheme, the UK visa scheme to attract the HDV truck drivers only attracted 27 people. <laughs> well, of course it would. I said that on the show. Have you seen the Times? Come and drive our trucks and we'll chuck you out on Christmas Eve. Who's going to go for that? <laughs> Well, They're so patronizing and high-handed, these the policies that come out of the They should get their military to be driving the trucks. They're going instead. to have to. Nobody else is interested. <laughs> Full-time drug travel. Drug They're travel not interested. But, but another point to it is uh, this. It's so easy for everybody to push the subsidy conversation away now. But I thought that some people shut this country down in January 2012 or 2013 because of this same subsidy. Yes, many of them are in government. When somebody tried to remove this subsidy and had the courage to do it... Yes, good luck, Billy Jonathan. Everybody said he was wrong. Which is why you don't jump on silly bandwagons. Well, yeah. You see, what, what, what shocks me in this country... Uh, you know, is, Jonathan is never, never recovered from that uh, yes. Oh, yes, That was the beginning of the end. Because his rating took a nosedive, and thereafter, of course, we know what it's happened. It's the only thing to yes. do. But... It okay. will be remembered in history okay. as having made that decision and so many people protested. People who are in government today. Well, thank you, Mr. Okay, if any, yes. two things before you go. The first will be a story on uh, page five of this day. Today. Yes. Okonjo Iweala, my purported resignation was fake news. 
Uh, we discussed that previously on this program, and now she has reiterated her position in this regard um, at a ministerial conference uh, yesterday to say that indeed it is not true, that she's tired of the job, that she's not going to go the Roberto as a Vedo way, and that you know she wants to use and that, that fake position news was to, circulated to in the difference. social media. Okay, so that's the first point, and I think that this is uh, you know for that clarification. Yeah. With regard to the anxiety that has been expressed, with regard to uh, you know uh, Dr. Ongozi Okonjo, well as uh, ser uh, tenure at the World Trade uh, Organization, and then of course the point you raised about the peace reaching by Onyeka for Breitway, our you know uh, awaiting uh, senior advocate, our senior Nigeria. advocate uh, in the waiting. Yeah, yeah. so <laughs> beyond zoning, the president of Nigeria needs. I was saying on this program, I think it was yesterday. That, look, there's already a debate about the kind of president that Nigeria needs. And the point uh, that she has raised, I think they're useful. Beyond the politics, she's talking about capacity, about vision, about wisdom, about integrity. Nigerians want the best. But what the problem is, at all levels, is that the politicians don't necessarily want what the people want. They are saying they don't want the best. Is that what you say? Yes. The politicians the don't want the best. Is, is it I, want to read, I want to quickly read part of a text message they I have here. take advantage of the situation. Yes, to know why. Sorry. Yeah. And it's, it's a really good point. It's not the man that is elected, but the system or structure under which he operates should be our focus. Okay, this is the problem. In Bangladesh, they took a decision, you know, to reinvent the civil service system. You can't be a charlatan and work in the civil service in Bangladesh. If Bangladesh can do it, why do we have a terrible civil service system in Nigeria, despite all the civil service reform? Because the engine of the state must work well. It doesn't matter. Irrespective of who you elect. Yeah, you can elect but an idiot. Not, but we've not got into that state. But if the state functions, you can maybe achieve results. Thank you very much, Emmanuel Effect.